call the February 22nd, 2018 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees to order. Um, second item is roll call. Judith Cavallaro. Present. Joseph Carroll. Present. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Nick Rico. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Approval of the minutes of the January 25th, 2018 regular monthly meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, corrections, errors, and omissions. I've got, uh, I've got a couple of uh, corrections on page one under item three, approval of minutes. The first paragraph at the end, it says December 21st, 2107. <laughs> And it should be 2017. <laughs> the chairman might still be here, but <laughs> <That's definitely. laughs> I'll be looking up at Daisy's by then. And I think that might be. I thought I had one other correction that I went for the other. I don't see it. I did. Mr. Chairman, I have a correction, please. Good yes. Idea. Uh, I believe on page six, Mr. Greenleaf went to see the Oops. sixth grade yeah, band, the not the sixth grade brand. Yeah. <laughs> Although they do have a good brand, Jason. They do. Sixth grade band. That's the one I couldn't find. Mm. Any other? None. Uh, uh, all in favor? None opposed. One extension. Mr. Viola was uh, not in attendance at the last meeting. Okay, uh, item four, superintendent operations report. David. Okay, thank you. Copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of January is included in the packet. Our average F1 flow for the month was 1.34 million gallons a day. Our F1 quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 95% POD and 99% TSS removal uh, uh, with uh, F1 concentrations of 12 and 4 milligrams per liter, respectively. <coughs> Copy of the pump station flows for the month of January is included in your packet. On the 13th, most of the pump stations exhibited a high flow. This was caused by that January thaw and an inch and a half of rain over, over two days. So, um, on January 31st, I received a call from a plumber that the service for Fort Herbert Drive was broken within the right of way. I met him on site and reviewed the CCTV and agreed, and I agreed with his conclusions. I reached out to uh, uh, Riz Bear, um, who once again responded quickly and made the repair and completed the work by 10 p.m. that night. Uh, Jay Kennan and I were on site for this work and coordinated the use of uh, Richard, Richard P. Walters' back truck to facil facilitate the repair. Carol, Josh, Paul, and Rudy completed the installation of five, five sludge processing valves within the uh, basement of the blower building. At the same time, they removed two sludge grinders and replaced them with four pieces. Uh, we are working with Underwood Engineering to develop a bio-wind model of the uh, wastewater treatment plant to, high, to help identify uh, additional some process efficiencies that we can uh, grab. E.J. Prescott has started the process to rehab two of the manholes within, uh, with an epoxy coating. Uh, they're actually uh, scheduled to do this work next week. Uh, that will be one on um, uh, uh, Pine Point Road, right at Primrose, and the second one is going to be on 77, um, where the Higgins Beach pump station discharges into. Um, I'll be attending the Maine uh, Water Environment Association's 2018 Legislative Breakfast on March 1st in Augusta. This is an opportunity for the organization to speak directly with legislatures, to answer questions, and to discuss current issues. Um, Rudy, Scott, Jay, and myself attended the Maine Water Utilities Association annual meeting and trade show in Portland. 
On the 15th, Scott, Karen, and I taught at the uh, Jet Sea Wastewater Operating School. The subject matter was preliminary treatment. Uh, Willette and Associates <laughs> were on site on the 19th, and they have begun our annual audit. Uh, they anticipated completing this audit this month and will make the presentations of their findings at a trustee's regular monthly meeting. We're hoping to have that next month, if that's at all possible. And then um, 2018 Main Utility Rate Survey update. Uh, 14 Main communities uh, work together to provide users with an up-to-date rate survey. This survey provides a brief comparison between these uh, communities with regards to rates, debts, uh, and future needs. As shown in the survey, typical residential rates range from a low of $374 per year to a high of $736 per year. Uh, the Scarborough Sanitary District's annual residential sewer bill is $396 per year. Uh, I'll post a copy of these, this rate survey on our website like I have done in the past. One thing to note is what is absent from this rate survey is Kenny of Portland Water District's uh, uh, rates. Um, uh, they just weren't provided in a time, time, timely manner such that they could be included in the survey. Um, for the class that I taught at Portland Water District, I prepared uh, the following slide or the slide I provided in the packet to compare the cost of wastewater treatment to tap water, bottled water, milk, and orange juice. Kind of like what we had discussed at the uh, previous meeting, um, where uh, you know tap water typically costs around um, a penny a gallon. Uh, milk is $3.91. Per gallon, orange juice comes in at six dollars and forty-four six six dollars and forty-four cents per gallon, and bottled spring water is about three dollars and fifty-two cents per gallon. And we're treating, providing treating the wastewater at the treatment plant at less than a penny a gallon. So I think it's a good demonstration of the efficiency of what we do as an organization. And was that it? And that's all I have. Any questions for the superintendent on his report? Not a, not a question per se, but just industrial parkway continues to be a mystery, huh? Last, yeah. Its peaking is usually like three and a half to four, and now last month, even with the snow melts, it's down to 2.4. So yeah. any idea at all is nothing. <laughs> I wish I knew. We're still thinking Where's it's coming from the... We're still, I think, thinking that it's coming from a private, private source, right. yeah. source that's connected with sewer. It's just weird. Some, it's some irregularity reason. there. Um, I'm sure that you'll keep looking. Oh yeah. Um, with regard to um, the the broken service on Herbert Drive, uh, I think you indicated to me that that was. Um, in the line, in the alignment of where a storm drain was installed by the town years ago? It was very close to the, uh, um, the alignment of, of where the storm drain was. And it, 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 when it appeared to, to, to us as we were out there, it was quite likely or quite possible that when they pulled the trench box along, the trench actually nicked the sewer right. service. Okay. Um, Unbeknownst yeah, so we it, it's it's not really anything associated with age or deterioration no. of the line, but it was it was some kind of physical damage that was done to it undetected at some point many years ago. Yeah. Um, and then the sludge grinders um, that were removed, <coughs> I'm assuming, and I probably shouldn't do that. I should ask this as a question instead. Um, uh, did we remove those because, we, as we've eliminated composting now, that there's no need for us to be doing any grinding? Uh, no, we, we've we've found in general that the screen, the fine screening at the front end of the plant, actually helps protect, uh, provide the needed protection of the equipment that okay. we need. All right, and then um, lastly, um, on the epoxy coating on the manhole structures. Mm -hmm. Um, are we doing like a little photo journal or a video of the before and after conditions of those? Is that part of the contract? Uh, it's not part of the contract, no. but we will do it ourselves. Okay. We'll take some 
we'll take some pictures. Yeah, I think it'll be That's really, it. I think it'll be really uh, important for the board to be able to see mm -hmm. a little bit of the before and after, and get have a good good understanding of what was accomplished by by doing the lining. So that would be nice. And that was all the questions that I had. So are we good to move on? I had a question. Ben. <coughs> on the uh, sewer, sewer rate survey that you did, it, it doesn't really distinguish between sewer districts and, and the cities. And the cities often will use uh, taxpayer money to, to supplement their, their budgets, where we're uh, completely on our, our rate, rate alone. So it, it, it would make us look better if we if we counted that in there somehow, that they're, they're actually using tax dollars in a lot of these uh, cities or towns? I think in the analysis, um, we looked at the expense. We didn't look at the revenue side. So I think that would probably, I think that would probably not uh, really affect the, the, the unit cost of the, of the treatment because we're just looking at the expense side and however they finance it isn't. Do you think that's is accounted for? I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's factored in. Uh, maybe Dave has a. I, I I don't do it personally. Howard Carter from Saco has taken this on himself personally. Um, frankly, I think he just works with the information that he can get. Yeah. Um, the previous time that he'd done it, he was able to get information from I think uh, 22 communities. I mean, a much wider swath of information, and um, <coughs> you know it's. Everyone covers costs differently, and you just, you know, it's information. Mm -hmm. You take it for what it's worth. I was also wondering why Wells wasn't on there. Howard didn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have a question, though. Why 8,000 cubic feet? Because in our town, we base an average user on 4,900 cubic feet. Kenny Bunk is inflated here because instead of 8,000 cubic feet that the survey's done on, they only base their average user on 6,000 cubic feet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our average cost per year is about $330. If we get into the survey, it's closer to Scarborough's <coughs> 400. You know, I'm not sure why 8,000 is picked. I mean, frankly, with all the low-flow fixtures we have now, people aren't using that type of water use anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure whether, you, I think the eight, it's 8,000 8, cubic, 8, cubic feet per year. My recollection was at one point in time that was considered the average yes. use from mm -hmm. a household, which is why they chose that number. Um, yeah, you're right. That, you know, flows are going down, but at the same time, concentrations are going up. So True. we got to take that into account when we do our rates. So maybe you could just have that conversation with him if he's going to do the survey mm -hmm. again. Uh, next year, or if if that's something that might need some clarification, he could think about it and decide what what he'd like to do to follow up with it. Again, it's it's not our survey; it's it's just some data that was available, and uh, and I think it's correct in the way it's presented. But um, as you said, as somebody who knows that you know in Kennebunk they bill on six thousand. Instead of eight thousand, would would know to make that adjustment right. and make that a win. So. Um, Joe, uh, any estimation on uh, when the damage or when the repair work was done at Four Herbert Drive? What was the question? When the potential Herbert insult Drive. was uh, when it occurred at Four Herbert Drive, how long of a time frame were we looking at in difference? From when? Not, not the sewer side, but like when the we when system. the repair. To the storm oh, it was, it was it was a while many ago. years ago. Yeah, years ago. 15 years ago they put this, the drains thereabouts in, in on that street. So, okay, we assume it happened then. Yeah. Okay. And just as a curiosity question, anything come out of your legislative breakfast uh, from the legislature that they were kind of interested about in our field, or sorry, any any me. regulations? You meeting with the? Oh, I thought meeting. I said he already attended. That's me. I will be attending. Yes, we are. Thank you. Yes, but, I am attending. Yeah. <laughs> but they will be talking about the bond issues. I know. Yeah, There's mostly two bond, bond issues. And, you know, we generally do a refresher on sort of the extent of um, 
what is water quality and operations and water quality. So it's usually a refresher for sort of the, you know, the, the legislators who aren't, who don't come other years. And there's it's usually nice a event. presentation on uh, different projects that have been done with SRF funds. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice event. State, so. yeah. It's probably not a bad time. I won't be there. Don't intend to go. Um, it's probably not a bad time, though, to also uh, just give a reminder that there's different organizational structures to the different uh, um, systems in the state. I think the legislators may lose track of the site that some systems are municipal, some are districts that are sewer districts, some are sanitary districts, and that were all governed by separate sets of laws and charters. So, uh, might good be, point. Might be good for them to be kind yeah. of reminded yeah. that we're not all in the same boat. Yeah, because the survey won't show that. Yeah, okay. I'll be going too, so I'll see you there. Other, you'll, you'll be there also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions or comments? Okay, moving on to correspondence, Dave. Yeah. Uh, I, I provide a revised ability serve letter for the proposed Bessie Commons 2 senior housing project. Uh, this revised letter addresses a reduction in the number of units from 46 to 40. Uh, this project will uh, be coming in front of the board for approval at some, uh, as it progresses. So. That's it for correspondence. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. I just wanted to uh, let the board know that I did receive some correspondence from a resident uh, Pine Point of Pine Point Road. I uh, apologize for uh, not copying in on it. I received the correspondence on Sunday. I've been sick with the flu since then, so I just actually read the correspondence today uh, and did have a response back to that uh, individual. Uh, I believe. Dave will be mentioning uh, an update here and under old business about the Pine Point Road odor issue. So on any of those questions that come up, I'll make sure that Dave addresses them during that time. Yeah, and following up with that, um, it would probably be a good idea, Dave, for you to touch base with legal counsel with regard to individual communications that trustees receive from uh, citizens or uh, other interested parties. Um, I'm sort of of the mindset that if we get a communication from a member of the public, that that becomes uh, subject to the public right to know uh, rules and regulations, and so that we should provide anything that we get of that line, whether it's emails or written correspondence, to you so that you can make the documentation copy of that. And if you recall, at the meeting we had with the neighborhood residents uh, from uh, the Pine Point area, Iris Drive uh, and Pine Point Road, uh, one of the residents wanted to feel free to call individual trustees to voice their complaints and concerns. And I advised them that they should call our administrative staff so that there's proper records made. Uh, and I don't mean any disrespect to any of the trustees, I'm including myself in this comment, but I cannot guarantee folks that if they call me or they corner me in the grocery store or whatever, that I would ever uh, with certainty document that conversation and provide a copy to David at the district office, and so that communication would be lost, and I encourage people not to call trustees with administrative kinds of questions, but to route those calls to the superintendent so that there's proper documentation that's made on those and we're sure that they could follow it up. Because if I put something in my to-do basket and something comes up and I don't get through it, you know, I'm retired and I don't sit at my desk for long periods. I actually, I do sit there for as little as I possibly can and my in-basket tends to get kind of thick because there's really no priorities in it to speak of. So if I put something in there and it doesn't get forwarded, then the complaint's been lost. And I'll, I try to communicate and pass things on to Dave, but there's no guarantee. And I think administratively, our record keeping at the district is sophisticated enough so that those calls get documented and, and if, if there's corrections that need to be made, those go into the log. So I would continue to encourage folks to call the superintendent at the district offices to be sure that they're uh, issues are addressed 
in timely fashion and that there's proper records and documentations made. But I would appreciate a little bit of feedback from our attorney with regard to mm -hmm. those types of communications. I'll, I'll reach out to him next week. And I actually think that verbal communications with individuals probably are not subject to the right to know law, but written any written communications probably will be. But I, I just would think it would be a good idea just to get clarification on that. So if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I'd add to that as well uh, with regards to email correspondence especially as to whether or not we should consider having district email addresses for the trustees. That is one, one topic that's come up. In my 10 years on the board, I think I've received maybe four or five email correspondence direct uh, from, uh, from the public, uh, two phone calls, I believe. But with regards to email, it, it does bring up a good point as to uh, using personal email, uh, work emails that are provided, and with a, a right to know situation, what is deemed legal in those cases. So yeah. if you could just find out about that, that would be great. Yeah, I don't think that would be a difficult thing to do if we wanted to do that. Thank you. Okay, old business, uh, a solar energy. Uh, per last month's discussion, I have requested uh, Google Energy to scale back the solar array project to benefit our site and to provide a financial plan. Um, and at the same time, I've reached out to Revision Energy for similar proposals. Uh, once these proposals are ready, I'll uh, present them to the board. Uh, Fine point odor issues. Uh, Ready Seafood has uh, or Reedy Seafood has completed their upgrades, which are now online. I've had no complaints from any residents from the Pine Point area regarding odors. Uh, we are continuing with our caustic addition along with the uh, potassium permanganate addition as uh, um, abatement uh, procedures. And uh, Water and Current has completed the design for the odor control system, and I'm currently reviewing it. And I'll be meeting contractor shortly to discuss construction. And if I may again, uh, addressing some of the questions that were asked in this correspondence regarding uh, our uh, timeline in terms of the implementation, Wood and Currents just finished up the design. Any idea on timeline on our behalf of review and possible implementation and what the next steps would be? My review will be very, very quick. Um, I assume I will be completing it within with, by next week, um, and I'll immediately start talking with contractors uh, to get construction moving right away. Okay. Uh, Reedy Seafood installed the tanks. I think I had spoken with Glenn today. He mentioned mm -hmm. that there was another component that still needs to be added, an ozone component. There's three pieces to their uh, 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 pretreatment system. Mm -hmm. They have a septic, uh, well, actually four. Uh, the first is uh, best management practices within the building themselves, uh, improving screening to keep any of the uh, large uh, material out of the sewer uh, uh, completely. Uh, then once it flows, it gets into the sewer system, their sewer system, it flows into a septic uh, tank. Uh, which is designed just to capture solids, any of the gross solids. From there, it flows into a grease trap, a, um, a hydromechanical style grease, grease trap. Uh, and then from there, it flows into a third tank for ozone addition. Uh, and the, uh, the tank is installed. The ozone piece of it is uh, remaining to be uh, started up. It, it, uh, I guess I had uh, some last minute issues with, with that piece of it. But they are currently flowing through the entire system. They've also provided a sampling manhole, which uh, we actually this morning collected a sample, sample uh, and we're in the process of analyzing the results. Waste is being hauled off, I understand, from there. The waste that saw, settles in the primary, t the, the, the septic tank, the first tank, is being hauled off monthly. The grease that will be uh, collected within the grease trap will also be hauled off site. Um, and then uh, from there, the ozone treatment, that just gets all conveyed right through the, the, into the, our collection system. That's just to help reduce the VOD load. Mm -hmm. 
And this green material probably goes somewhere to be composted. That goes, in, they, that goes, gets composted. I believe they sell that off as compost, compostable material. Uh, any other businesses, commercial or otherwise, that we should have our eyes on down there? Have you had any good correspondence with the planning board or? Yeah, I've been, I've been uh, talking to the planning board, and uh, there are a few. Uh, few businesses in uh, the uh, Snows Canning area that I'm, I'm uh, in the process of setting up some site visits in order to uh, do an inspection and collect some samples and see whether it's something that we need to do for a follow-up on. But my focus as of late was to get Ready Seafood up and running and online, which I, I think they did a commendable job on that as quickly as they did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It is important to note that the correspondence I received, the individual had not uh, had not had any odor complaints uh, of late, so that was great news. Concern, obviously, going into the summer months, and that that'll change with change in temperature. And I think it's safe to say that we don't know that right now. We don't know what we don't know, uh, but uh, we're going to continue our methods until until we get our new equipment up to speed and uh, until we deem the caustic or other additives aren't necessary. Exactly. You know, we'll, we'll continue with whatever whatever is needed. Great. Thank you. Quick um, question, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes. The ozone, is that from tanks, or are they generating it on site? I don't know how they, uh, how they produce it, whether they have it on. They use a lot of ozone within their processing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming they generate it on site, but mm -hmm. I don't know that for a fact. Okay, just curious. Yeah. That's why they chose, chose it. It's a good idea. Okay. Um, so the ozone basically is going to help us because it's, it's basically introducing excess air into the, the discharge which is exactly the same thing that we're doing at the pump station when we get our uh, exactly. uh, mm. odor control system in place. So I don't think that it'll be detrimental in any way to us. It'll just provide extra, dro extra uh, oxygen content to that waste stream. I'm curious, Mr. Chairman, uh, the speech cone that Woodard and Curran has, the system is designed to come off the force main mm -hmm. and then back into the force main, yes? Correct. Okay. With respect to ozone going in before it hits our pump station, is there a possibility that like with hydrogen peroxide, which I've had experience with, could there be potential for air binding these pumps? I think you would have to have an excessive amount of ozone. Okay. You think it'll be used yeah. up by the time it gets there? Okay, good. And the uh, sampling manhole, will that be after ozone or prior to? After. After. And do you uh, suppose we'll do uh, probably a monthly sampling to start out with or weekly or after? Uh, it, it, it will be at least monthly initially until we can get a baseline. See how things are going. Yeah, and, if, and then after a period of testing, it's consistent. We can scale it back. If it's inconsistent, we'll scale it up. Yep. As appropriate. Yeah, I think it would be wise to go through a full year of monthly testing for temperature variations, for waste load variations, the you know the the seasonal changes in harvesting and what they process. And, uh, so I don't I don't think we should jump to a quick conclusion after no. a short period that there's no no issue there. But it'd be good to get at least a full 12 month and, yeah, cycle in. For example, they're going to actually be shutting down processing. Uh, I, I think it's either the end of this month or the beginning of next. I forget the time. They provided me that, but I can't yeah. remember what exactly it was. Yeah. I think Glenn told me the 8th today. March 8th? Yes. I, don't hold me to that, but I believe it was the beginning of next month. And, and for like a two-week They're going to shut down time. and do the ozone implementation during that time. Yeah. Do you think it would be beneficial, excuse me, do you think it would be beneficial maybe at least in the first couple months to do uh, weekly sampling? Just so it doesn't get out away from us, because yeah. especially going to the summer months and tourists and stuff, and uh, the residents and the hotter weather. You know, if uh, we did uh, weekly testing to start out with, and it was showing some consistency, and we'd know more rapidly if we need to make adjustments. Yep, yeah, we can do that. 
So I just say keep us appraised of the schedule mm -hmm. and an overview of the analytical results from, from month to month. And, and you can advise us as to which way we ought to go depending on what your findings are. Okay. Um, okay, moving on, new business, uh, 318 U.S. Route 1. On behalf of Prompto Oil, uh, Sebago Technics is requesting approval to connect and discharge into the sewer, the sanitary wastewater from the proposed Prompto Oil facility to be located at 318 U.S. Route 1. The proposed sewer service would be via a low-pressure sewer system, including a 2-inch low-pressure sewer force main be installed within the right of way of US Route 1. The force main would discharge into the existing gravity sewer manhole located in front of 332 uh, US Route 1. The sewer system consists of approximately 50 linear feet of uh, four inch gravity sewer service, 35 feet of inch and a quarter uh, pressure sewer at one manhole and 385 feet of two inch pressure sewer plus only one station. There are no floor drains or sump pumps. The pressure sewer and manhole within the public uh, right away would be transferred over to the sanitary district upon completion of the project. I recommend the city with the following conditions. Uh, based on historical data from other facilities, sanitary wastewater flows should be limited to 200 gallons per day. Any flows in excess of the approved amount or typical characteristics are subject to additional approvals. This lot is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 15.83 per gallon, and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record construction cost index. Based on the current <coughs> ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due is $3,166. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. All sewer pipes shall be SDR 11 HPPE shall be the color green or with a green stripe. Installation shall be in accordance uh, with the manufacturer's recommendations. Stainless steel curb stop with integral check valve shall be installed on the sewer service within the property boundaries at the property line. Valve box shall be embossed sewer. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permits. Sewer extension permit is required. Complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. And the sewer permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work <coughs> should be completed. And finally, professionally surveyed electronic field reference CAD drawings that you have, and stamped PDF <coughs> and stamped paper copy to be submitted to the to the district upon completion of the project. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval with the four stated <coughs> conditions. Moved is your second? Second. Second by Jason. Jason. Um, questions or comments? Question? Um, do we usually have them bury a wire with? Yeah, that's part of my standard. Okay. We do. Um, and it's on the drawing. Good. We do. I think okay. it would be yes. wise to make that Part of the condition of approval for this to be absolutely certain. I'll that amend my motion. No issues with it getting done because if we have to find this <coughs> 20 years from now, that's going to be other than test pitting. That's going to be the only way. So you you amend your motion. I amended my motion. To that okay, Jason. That yes. Okay. Just just for note, it is shown in their detail, but I will add it. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as amended? That's zero. Thank you. Okay, 577 U.S. Route 1. Selfgate House, on uh, behalf of a Vista, a Vista House. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. I have to go back to 318 U.S. Route 1 with a question that just popped into my head. Um, is this parcel within the existing sewer service area? Um, is it, my recollection is it is not. Okay, so I think the rules require that the planning board confirm that the extension of sewer 
two parcels that are not in our sewer service area um, is in compliance with the comprehensive plan. And so I unless that unless that requirement has been changed, which I'm not aware of, uh, I think it would be prudent to uh, follow up with them and be sure that we get that documentation. I will. Normally, I think we would. Uh, normally, I think we would not act on a sewer extension um, without that authorization. Um, and I and I guess I'm wondering now. This has not received planning board approval yet. Right? They were in front of the vet planning board Monday night, I believe. Um, it wasn't not up for approval. Tuesday night. 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 This week. So I regret that that just hit me out of the blue and that I didn't think of it in advance to give you a, give anybody a heads up. Um, I guess I, I'm sort of comfortable going forward to such a small project and there's no certainly no significant impact on the community this way and I don't expect an issue from the planning board but I just want to be in compliance with the procedural requirements for sewer extensions. I will follow up on that. So I guess um should take a look. I'll put another condition on. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm not wanting to I'm not wanting to beat this to death, but I'm just trying to think about um, on a bigger on a bigger stage with a bigger project, it would be much more of an issue and we probably would not take any action on an item like that until we had that letter from the planning board. So uh, I guess maybe what I should do is just ask the superintendent to hold on to the <coughs> letter confirming the board's action until we get some feedback from the planning board. And if it is an issue for the planning board, then this be on the agenda for reconsideration at the, at the next meeting. Yep. Kind of a cumbersome way to do it, oh. but I think it keeps us moving along here and uh, I'll try to remember in the future to try and pick up on that kind of a question. But I'll try to remember. Yeah. <clears throat> and maybe the rule has changed. You could, you could check. Uh, it, it became a, uh, it was, it was an, uh, it was a requirement that was enacted by the legislature. I cannot give you a site on it and it was at least 10 years ago, maybe more that it happened. Um, I'm not aware that it's ever been been modified or changed. So I think it would be, I think it'd just be a good idea to follow up with that. And maybe, uh, maybe the planning department, because it's part of the comprehensive <coughs> planning process, maybe the planning department could give you the sites on that for reference. Yep. Trying to avoid going to legal counsel for unnecessary billable hours. Okay, so we can move on. Uh, 577 U.S. Route 1. Southgate Housing, Vista Housing. On, a, on behalf of the Vista Housing, Tobago Technus is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed affordable housing project. This project was originally uh, approved for by the district uh, for 50 dwelling units in August of 2015. Vista Housing has requested revised approval for 45 dwelling units. No other changes or modifications to the plans um, to, uh, have been made with regards to the utilities. Uh, the existing building sewer service will be replaced with a new 4-inch gravity, which will flow by gravity into um, uh, a 6-inch sewer service stub servicing the property. The new building will be serviced by an on-site pump station, which will pump into a 6-inch sewer service stub. The existing barn uh, will be converted to a community space with a single bathroom. All sewer-related infrastructure located on the property will remain private. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, this project is inside the original sewer service area with an allocation of five residential dwelling units. Consequently, the capacity reserve fee is based on the remaining 40 single-family res res residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, and non-residential flow are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fee. 
The current capacity reserve fee per dwelling unit is $3,166. Um, adjusted monthly uh, based on the ENR and based on that current index, the capacity reserve fee due uh, would be $126,640. The proposed community space uh, will be used solely by the residents who will not have a kitchen. If future use of the space changes, additional district approval uh, is required. Provide the district with a copy of the maintenance contract for the pump station and all future renewals of, or new agreements. Uh, provide remote communication of high water alarm to the on-call service provider district standard via battery powered float. The panel's functionality shall be fully maintained at all times. Execute and file an easement deed for the revised sanitary district easement in accordance with district standards. And I have attached a copy to this originally. Uh, final plan submitted to the uh, superintendent for approval. And uh, finally, uh, professionally surveyed um, do a reference uh, CAD drawings and paper copies as required by the district. Move approval, Mr. Chairman, with the aforementioned conditions. Second. 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 Judy. Um, Question. Sure. Uh, looking at the letter, it's talking about 38 units, not 40 units. The numbers seem to be a little off. 33 units, 38 less the five allocation. Unless I'm reading that wrong. It looks like of both letters, to the conversations from 38 to, from 50 to 38. All right, well, I made an error on that. Because um, the dollar amounts are also different. So, yeah, that would have to be adjusted. I don't know how I got 45 out of that. Nope. Well, it was You're a saying 45 is 45 there. Yeah, there's no 45 dwelling unit. Get my letter? No, no, no you're there. there. In their email. email. Dan's email. I just don't have it. Where did it go? There it is. Then he went from That's what it was approved for. Now they're saying 38. Right, this is correct. Right. So you're sa in September, oh, yeah. the planning board approved an amendment from f reducing it from 50 to 38. Yeah. Okay. Where does it mm -hmm. say that? No, from 50 to 45. Their email. 50 to 38. Oh, in here. 38. To 38. Right. Right. Amended. They amended their request for 45 down to 38. Mm-hmm. Where'd the 45 come from? That's where the 45 came from. That's how I, that's, the original, I, I see how, what happened. That was the original The original request was 50 un, for 50 units. The, the, the allocation oh, okay. was originally for five. I get it They reduced it to, the fee was based on their 45. Fee, based on 45, yeah. and then I inadvertently carried that 45 units forward. Uh, versus changing it to 38. So we would be approving the number 33. Would be 30, no, the, 38. The, 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 the approval would be for 38 Minus units, and, but the fee would be based, based on, on 33. 33. I get it. So I'll amend my motion from 45 down to 38 to match what the planning board approved for the site. I apologize for that error. No worries. Good catch. I had a question on the barn. And Wait a minute. And um, before we go on, before we go on, then so the we capacity actually, reserve fee decreases significantly. Uh, Thirty-three is not going to be for forty dwelling units. It's going to be for 30, 33 based on thirty-three units because they get a credit of five. So we have to change. We have to change the recommendation, the condition of your letter. And that amount would be 104. I think you cover that in your letter, actually. Isn't that correct? He did, but it, but in his in his uh, report to us in the motion, right, it was, it was wrong. So we we want to clarify that the yep. capacity reserve fee 
will be based on 33 dwelling units subject to the capacity reserve fee mm -hmm. with a corresponding dollar amount of $104,470. So that's consistent with David's letter to the owner, I'm sorry, to the consultant, um, um, but it corrects his, it corrects his memo, memo yep. cost from yep. Again, I apologize. That's okay. Other comments or questions? Uh, does Ms. Cavallaro need to amend her second to match my amendment of my motion to go down to 38 minutes? From 45 to 38. Yeah, that would be, that would be prudent. We could, I mean, if, if you want to, we can vote on the amendment and then, and then on the main motion. So. Okay. Why don't you make a motion to amend the motion <laughs> to 38 <laughs> units with a capacity reserve fee on 33? All right. I will amend my motion to approve 38 units with a capacity reserve fee based on 33 units, given the five-unit credit for this property. And that would make the capacity reserve fee amount 104478. And it would make the... Uh, Capacity reserve fee of 104-478. Thank you. Is there a second to that amendment? I second. Okay. I do want to point out that that's different than the, the that's value the that's in the letter, which says 104-360. 104, 104, that could be from the ENR change I think that's since when you wrote the letter. Yeah, the letter was written, written in January. Mm -hmm. And the oh, uh, yeah. is adjustment in the ENR. So we'll go yep. with, we're going to go with the number that they provided us tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so all those. In, I'm sorry, Ben. Go. On the barn, they're they're going to have a, a single bathroom in there. But how does the sewer run from that? Does it run in through the through the other building? Just to bear with me while I look at it. We can have four of seven, I think it's right. Yeah, that would be all internal. station right there, see so we're coming out of this building here. There's no individual sewer service going for it. Um, it it's going to have to be falling. I don't know how their internal plumbing is working. No, but I mean, how do they tie into the sewer? It's either through one through of the, the other buildings. buildings. Uh, I don't have the internal plumbing drives. Yeah, and along with the water will come in yeah. from one of the, the other buildings. The water's coming in from the other buildings. Yeah, okay. So you can clarify that in yeah. case they intend to run them outside. Somewhere okay, and we have an we have an amendment to the motion on the floor. Yeah, there it is. Any other questions? All, right, all those in favor of the amendment to the main motion. Seven in favor, of one opposed. Right. Um, and before we vote on the on the main motion, Dave, a question. Um, again. I'm concerned about communications of these fees going to engineers and not to the owners of the project. I think we've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that we should at least copy the owners of these projects because there's nothing that says that the engineers are forwarding this information 
like to think they would be fulfilling their professional responsibilities completely, but I, I just don't want owners showing up at, at our offices unawares of some of these substantial fees. Um, and when they become aware of them at the last minute, it becomes problematic because a lot of times their financing is already sort of arranged and they become hysterical and unreasonable. So I think we're supposed to be trying to copy the owners of the projects in addition to the engineering companies more, more to protect ourselves and be sure they're getting that data. What we have been doing um, for the better part of three years now is all approvals um, have been forwarded to whoever's been communicating with me, but does require the signature of the owner um, before we execute any of the, the projects. Oh, on the permits and applications? I send a, a letter of approval back to whoever I've been communicating with, uh, and at the very bottom of it, there's a space that requires the signature of the owner of, for, a, of, of, for acceptance of the conditions of approval. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. so, and so I've been getting those okay. on a regular basis. All right. I think it's really important that they have all that information in advance, and, and I'm not comfortable trusting that a consultant is going to forward on Sometimes it might be painful information. They just assume that it come from us. So, okay, uh, as long as as long as what you're doing is working, I'll, I'll I will continue to go that way. Okay. All right. So, all those in favor of the motion on the floor as it's been amended. Uh, seven in favor and opposed. Thank you. Okay. I have one more quick question for Dave on that. So the the sheet number four, which shows the pump station, refers to see detail there's not actually a detailed sheet in this plan so we've covered the important elements of the pump station in the terms and conditions mm -hmm. but it's just sort of a formality mm -hmm. it's pointing to a detail but there is no detail for the pump station yeah I you know I, I, I I've seen the detail of the pump station matter of fact they moved, moved it as a result of some comments I had on right. it yeah I figured you had uh, you know when with the reapproval of this project it just didn't get included in this yeah. packet okay. Okay, moving on, 20 Black Point Road, Family Chiropractic. Uh, on behalf of Black Point Holdings, uh, St. Clair Associates is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer, the sanitary wastewater from the proposed 8,776 square foot multi-tenant building to be located at 20 Black Point Road. The primary tenant will be Scarborough Family Chiropractic. The remaining space will likely house two other tenants of similar use. The proposed sewer service will tie into the existing gravity sewer on Block Point Road. An existing sewer service already services the site. And the test pit will be done to determine if it can be used. I recommend approval with the conditions, the following conditions. Uh, based on district standards of 8.5 down to 100 square feet, uh, requested flow of 750 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater is appropriate. Uh, with the sanitary wastewater flow um, be limited to 750 gallons and will, include, will not include any process waste or food service waste. Any flows in excess of that um, will be subject to additional approvals. This lot's original, original allocation was 160 gallons per day. With that, the remaining 590 gallons per day is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 1583 per gallon. It is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee is $9,339.70, which is due upon issuance of the, oh, that's your extension permit. The sewer permit. Uh, the sewer service was installed in accordance with district standards, including a minimum depth of four feet. Uh, final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permit. Um, sewer permit is required, and a complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district. Um, at the time the permit is executed, prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. And finally, the record drawings uh, provided 
the geo reference stamp in um, Shelby's local district. Move approval, Mr. Chairman, with the aforementioned conditions. Second. <clears throat> okay. Um, you know, I guess I don't really have any questions on the sewer. But I do have questions on the traffic. I mean, they're talking about 90 patients a day. That's 180 trips in and out of this facility for just patients. And that's without the existing additional space being leased. I don't know who the tenants are. So I would just ask the superintendent to make an inquiry of the planning staff to see whether their traffic analysis included 180 trips a day for patients to the chiropractic unit and an undetermined amount of trips in and out of there for the additional leasable space. Um, I find it hard to believe that they could handle 180 trips, left turns in and out at that location on Black Point Road. The left turn lane is only adequate for, I think, storage of two vehicles. And I know it's not my realm of, it's not our realm of responsibility here, but I just want to pass that on. It's just an observation from the data that they've submitted to us. And it's in table, the table on page three of her letter. Mm -hmm. So if you could just pass that on, I'd be happy to avoid having a further nightmare on that portion of Black Mountain. <laughs> You've been on that road a lot, haven't you? <laughs> Following up on that question, don't, don't Mr. Want to ask. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, is this the former widow's walk? Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, but the access is through the assisted living facility further up Black Point Road where there's an existing left turn lane where they shortened, yep. they shortened the left turn lane for traffic heading to Route 1. Yes, I recall that, half, unfortunately, yes. Which is why that intersection backs up like crazy now. Is, is there any... So let's oh, not yeah. talk about traffic anymore because that's not, that's not our realm here. I nope, only want the superintendent true. to contact planning staff and just highlight that for them because I don't okay. know what data I was, was presented to them for traffic. curious if there was a second access coming from one no, moving back to that no. property. There is not. That was originally discussed. I guess it never fell, it fell Correct. through. Correct. I will, I will simply add at that comprehensive planning, uh, Plan of Palooza that yeah. I attended, they did show several models of that intersection to show how traffic heading toward Route 1 from Black Point Road could be improved by changing lanes. So I know that that is, in general, that intersection is on the planner's minds as they wrap this up. That could, be, that could be 20 years away. Right. But I just want it, it, to... Or Risperra Brothers may have to do it. Hmm. <laughs> but they are looking. They already have modeled that. So. I'm just kidding. I don't want everybody to know that, that was just a flip <laughs> comment because Rocky was sitting there. I just had one question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in, in their letter on page three, they were talking about uh, 768 uh, gallons per day, and then they based off the sanitary district's calculation, which I assume provided them, to back it down to 746 gallons per day, um, giving them, you know, the go ahead for approximately 750 gallons per day. I'm just wondering. Were they calculating at a uh, a higher rate than 8.5 percent? Yeah, it's one of these things. That it's it's really hard to determine what the actual number is going to be. Um, and you know, I looked at their initial calculation. It, it you know it seemed pretty good. It, it, it compared favorably with with uh, you know this was a second go around on yep. flows. Uh, compared favorably with our eight and a half gallons per hundred square foot. We don't know what the other tenants are going to be. Right. So, um, I, you know, I just thought it'd be just more apropos to go with our standard, and then we'll monitor it as we do with all commercial, new commercial businesses. And if they need need additional flow, they'll have to come back to the district and request it. Okay. Thank you. They are a current customer. Correct. I mean, you could. They are, but they are part of another. They're in a building with several other businesses, and it's really tough to tease out what flow they're actually generating at this I point see. in time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, good job with that. Um, okay, all those in favor of the motion? None opposed. Sorry to take this. I just, <laughs> I just could not do it. All right, uh, item D, Skyber Downs Development, Crossroads Holding, LLC. We do have uh, <coughs> um, people representing Crosshold, uh, Crossroads Holding here. Uh, on behalf of Crossroads Holding, Will Palmer is requested uh, an item be placed on the agenda for the Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, this request is for an opportunity for the new owners of Scarborough Downs to introduce the project and to discuss the future development goals. Uh, no action will be required uh, by the board tonight with regards. This is purely informational at this point. And uh, at the podium is uh, Rocky Brisbera, um, who will be doing the presentation. So should we sit out there and watch? Or it's the same. Watch? It's on the TVs as well. Okay. So you don't have to move. Good. Comfortable. It's a question of my eyesight. <laughs> Put your glasses on, Chuck. Well, so, good evening, folks. Uh, Rocky Risbera here tonight representing Crossroad Holdings, LLC. And I uh, really appreciate being allowed to be on the agenda tonight. Um, I don't really have an ask. Uh, just wanted to come meet with you talk about our project and uh, sort of introduce it, introduce the, some of the ideas that we're working on, and uh, maybe get a little bit of feedback from you folks. So uh, we start off here on the slides with just a kind of an iconic uh, picture of the Downs. And uh, it's, it's a grandstand building. And uh, my brothers and I uh, entered into a, you know, a partnership with the Mishu brothers, uh, who are residents of Scarborough. And had their businesses here for years who were Michoud distributors. And we entered into a partnership with those guys a few years ago and we started building apartments and it, it went really well together. And uh, we, we've done a lot of, lot of good things and, and it's been successful. And when this property came to our attention, uh, we were pretty excited about it. Um, we recognize that it's a pretty large site and a, and a pretty large undertaking, but we felt that we were, we were ready to, uh, to do it. So I wanted to bring it to you folks tonight and just talk about, whoops, it's a little sensitive. Um, the property itself, what you're looking at here is uh, sort of our initial master plan and uh, the approval process for the town, I, sh I should back up a little bit, in 2013 the town adopted the crossroad zone uh, and put all of the Cabot Downs property in what is called the crossroad zone. That zone is a very liberal zone, uh, it allows a multitude of, uh, of uh, things to be built, almost anything you can think of. A few things can't be done, but uh, really a lot, of, a lot of things can be done. And uh, so part of the approval process uh, with the town is to go through a master planning process. And what we're doing right now, we've been to the planning board, we have one, we've met one meeting with the planning board, we've got another one scheduled, we've had a, a meeting with the uh, town council just to talk about the project, similar to, to what we're doing with you folks tonight. Um, so moving through the process, we've, we've uh, identified pretty much the boundaries of the property. It's about a 500 acre site. We managed to get some wetland work done uh, before the snow flew. Uh, primarily down in this area, uh, what we're calling Pod 1, and over here in Pod 2, which is out on Haggis Parkway. Uh, and we have uh, a, a lot of information that's been done over the years. This property's been under contract, it's been for sale for years. Uh, it's been under contract several times. So we've got some uh, older wetland information that we need to uh, get tuned up in the spring. But we managed to get some, uh, get some wetland work done and, and get an understanding of what we had uh, so we've got 500 acres overall. We've got about 300 acres that are developable. Um, we have looked at uh, existing utilities. Uh, and basically, we have you know, utilities all around the site. We have some utilities. We have sewer and water and power, obviously, on the site. But virtually nothing that will be you know, in use once we develop the site. Uh, the site was built in 1949, 1950, from what I understand. Uh, we've got an old water main. We've got a pump station that's a private pump station that was put in back in the 70s or maybe the 80s, I guess. 
So um, none of that will be utilized, but, but uh, we'll be coming forward with, you know, for approvals uh, for new infrastructure. But I want to just talk about um, the site itself, um, give you a little, a little heads up, if you will. Route 1 being down here, Higus Parkway here, Payne Road here. Right now, the existing, I think most people are familiar with the site, the existing throughway is right through here. It's about a 70 mile an hour zone right now. If you, <laughs> if you can dodge um, the park. Our intention is to utilize the, you know, the points on Route 1, Payne Road uh, that exist, uh, utilize the traffic signals. Uh, those will probably have to get upgraded at some point in time. Uh, but utilize those points of access, do a little bit of a realignment of the road and move it over to here, put a new road in from Hygis and, and back out so that this throughway will become a, a four-way stop. Mm -hmm. So our vision for the property is, is really, uh, it, it's, it, it's very loose right now. We don't have a lot nailed down. Um, we're getting a lot of feedback uh, you know, from the town and uh, a lot of feedback at uh, Hannaford and Shaw's on the weekend uh, <laughs> as to what, what people think we ought to do. But our intention would be, down here on this Route 1 end, would be sort of a residential area. We feel it's, it's fitting. And then as we get up into the property, up near the track, the track's going to continue to operate for a couple of years. Frankly, we don't know a whole lot about horse racing business. Uh, so we're going to just let that run. Uh, there's, there's 500 acres here to develop, and we thought we'd start on one end and chip away at it and figure this piece out uh, you know, when, when the time was right. We do see at some point in time that, that maybe this is where that village core, that town center that people have talked about uh, would end up uh, with the road continuing through. We've got an area in here that could be additional residential. We want to speak to that we have spoken to the town about the one thing we can't do is uh, what we're calling light commercial for lack of a better term. We're going to talk with uh, the, the, we did talk with the council the other night about maybe changing that or adding that use in this area, adding that use to that zone because we think that uh, there's a high demand for some, some light, uh, light industrial type use. We're not looking at heavy <coughs> manufacturing or heavy trucking, but we feel that, that there's a definite need for that. So we felt that up on this Payne Road end, you know, that would be, uh, could be appropriate. And then this area down in here could be some residential or this could push down a little further if we felt that that, that was the, the need or the demand. Uh, we don't know if there might be some, you know, some office or biotech that might be interested in this site. Um, it's really very early, very early in the process. So part of the process for the approvals is we, you know, we come up with a master plan and then we pick off areas. And I think the, the, zone, the zoning ordinance actually says in 50 acre blocks uh, to look at. And so, this area down in here uh, is where we're starting. I want to show you this next slide because I think it's kind of fun. Whoop, there it is. So we took our site, our 500 acre site, just to get a sense of scale. And we dropped it down on the Portland Peninsula. <laughs> and so it's a little bit hard to see, but if you look closely, you know, there's Commercial Street, there's Back Cove, you know, the ends of the city. It's 500 acres is, is a good chunk of the Portland Peninsula. Not that that would ever get built, but it kind of helps give you a sense of scale. And, and the other thing that I think is important to think about is all the different uses that are in this one spot that, that coexist. And so I think with the downs, it's the, uh, the crossroad zone is an interesting zone. It allows a multitude of things, and I think we have to you have to be open-minded to, to, to allow different types of uses that maybe traditionally we didn't have, uh, you know, houses near light industrial or we didn't, we separated things. And, and I think the trend throughout the country is, is going to a different, uh, you know, a different feel for those types of things. They're, they're a little closer together. But I just thought that this was kind of an interesting slide to, to look at just to give a sense of scale. Uh, in spending time out, you know, out at the downs and, and walking the site, 500 acres is a pretty big site. Uh, granted, a couple hundred are wet, uh, but there's 300 acres there that's developable. And uh, in spite of what you might have read in the paper, uh, we do not think this will take 40 years. Uh, I'm not really sure how they came up with that one, but uh, 
you know, we think it, it is a long-term project, but we think a good piece of this project could be, uh, could be built in the next 10 years. It's going to be market-driven, and that's, that's something that we've talked about with the council and the planning board, that, that um, it, it really will be, has to be market-driven. So something that we could focus on is down on this, this end of the project, uh, where we see a residential, residential area. What we're showing kind of preliminarily in this area is about 135 units, roughly, uh, maybe 30 to 40 house lots, the rest being some condominiums in this area. We're thinking some apartments. We feel, uh, we feel that the apartment market is still, uh, still very viable. We actually have uh, Camoyne Associates, uh, Jim Demesis, many of you probably know Jim, he lives right here in town. Uh, Jim's a very, very bright guy, works all over the country. Uh, he's working on a market study for us right now to help us really figure out what directions we should be heading in. And uh, we're, we're anxious to get that report that's due to us uh, by the end of March. But we know the residential market, and we know, um, we know overall that in order to tr attract uh, you know, major tenants, major end users, somebody that wants to come into this village core, uh, some, uh, someone that wants to come into the village core and, and in this area, you know, we're hoping for grocery. We know we need some rooftops. So we know the residential market. We know that this area feels right for residential construction, so we're going to be moving forward with, with this, uh, this pod first. Um, get some rooftops going. Um, let's end users know that the project's viable, it's real, it's going to happen. Again, it's been under contract 17 times in the last 15 years and never closed. You know, we've closed and we want to we wanna move forward with it. And uh, getting this started, uh, I think, is going to be important uh, to, to get people to come. This next slide, we've looked at um, utilities. And as I said, we, we, know we don't have any sewer or any, any water or anything up in this area. We've, we think that this residential area could be served by sewer if we could get into um, this uh, sewer system that's in uh, Enterprise. And we have a place right here where we have the rights to do that um, as, a, as a pipe stem for a public road there. Um, so we're thinking that's easy. We don't have rights here. But when I was in the dentist chair the other day, I talked to him about it. And He's interested in talking with us about it. So obviously we're going to need board approval and uh, trustee approval and, and, and whatnot. But we think we can serve you know, this whole area if we could come out of Enterprise with gravity sewer. And we think that's probably going to make the most sense. If I go back a slide, two slides, we think the rest of this area is probably going to have to wind up with a pump station. Uh, we've looked at, you know, we've got sewer here in Haigas. Uh, there's sewer and pain, but it's way back here. So our initial thoughts, and again, we have not put a lot of time into this, but our initial thoughts are we'd probably wind up with a public pump station somewhere in here. Um, I don't think it's going to be any issue with you know, meeting the demand. I know you, you folks, as a rule, like to have a certain number of users, um, and I think given some time, we, you know, we certainly can meet that. Um, So that's utilities. And uh, oh, my last slide is just uh, kind of an overall. It's a little bit difficult to see. The property's outlined in yellow. You can see the track. And we've just laid in all of the existing utilities around the property, uh, just to be kind of helpful for us to figure out where we're going with things. So that's really my presentation. I just wanted you folks to know about it, looking for some feedback. Um, obviously, it's going to take us a little time. I think the the uh, phase one piece is something that uh, we think we can be working on uh, this calendar year. Uh, we've got an initial meeting with the DEP next week, try to get a game plan together with, with them. Uh, Doyle Palmer, I, I forgot to introduce, uh, Christy Holmes is here tonight with me. He's an engineer with Goral Palmer. Uh, Dan Bacon is uh, with Goral Palmer and is taking the lead on this. Um, and so we're working with them and going to try to move forward with at least this first piece uh, to try to get a shovel in the ground this year. And the rest of the project, I think, is going to come. We've got you know, several interested parties. Uh, the phone's rung quite a lot. And uh, there's been a lot happening. So I, I think we're going to be 
and you know, moving right along with this, with this property. But again, just want to get it in front of you tonight and uh, have you be aware of it. So without jumping into the sewer questions um, that, that this will raise in terms of capacity and locations, um, do you view do you view the the town center component of this, which I'm thinking of as like a some uh, a, a village of uh, mixed uses, um, retail restaurants? Mm -hmm. um, do you view this as a regional attraction, something that's going to be bringing, in other words, the, the, the tenants that are going to locate there, or if you're going to sell, or if you're going to lease, I'm not sure how it's going to, how you're going to structure that, um, that space. But um, are you thinking that it's going to be tenants that you're going to attract because you're 10 minutes away from 60,000 people in the city of Portland? and? 10 minutes away from Saco, and you've got 20,000 people in Scarborough and another 20 in South Portland, that this could be a regional center that would be an attraction for folks because of the characteristics of the center? Or are you th thinking more of just servicing the 500 acres? I think it's probably both. Um, we do have some uh, larger users that are interested that, that could be more regional, if you will. <laughs> Um, one of the things that we've thought about and talked about is to have some sports facility here, which is going to bring, you know, bring people. Um, we think there's a great fit for it. I'm hearing it all over New England that, that, that we need it and, uh, and that we're ready for it. So that's, that's a component. Um, we think definitely grocery. Uh, we've got interested grocery. Um, and we think that, that that'll happen. So I, I really think it's, it's, it's kind of both. There'll be a little bit of regional, but probably more local local use. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, in that village center, we do see some restaurants, some um, restaurant shops, those kinds of things. We're kind of looking at uh, a project down in Massachusetts called Mass, Mashpee Commons. Uh, it's kind of a village center kind of thing. We've, we've looked at that. We've done a lot of what I call paper doll sessions where we kind <coughs> of plop different projects in. And this has been done all over the country. So, you know, we're really trying to, to you know, gain some knowledge out of, out of other areas that have been done. So, um, but we do see that center is, as, as, as you described, that, yeah. that kind of a thing. And then, then there's also the, the talk of, you know, a town, uh, a town facility. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk with the council about, about trying to figure out, you know, could there be a community center here? Could there be a senior center or, or some type of, of use that, that could work? And I think that, uh, that there's opportunity here uh, for that. Civic Center. Civic Center. Well, I haven't seen you at Hannaford yet, so I'll put my plug in for a one mile high bank to oval track. <laughs> I, I, I think it's an exciting project. I think, uh, I think you'd be commended for being able to start to pull this together, and I wish you the best of luck trying to pull it off. I'm sure there are going to be issues about access to utilities and capacity of pipelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you get further down your process, uh, talking with the board, but especially working with David to try to fl flush sure. those out, and uh, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do think that, as I said earlier on one of the agenda items, uh, that we don't really want to surprise you <coughs> with some of the costs and fees that you might be encountering here. Uh, I'm not sure capacity-wise, I just can't tell you offhand uh, what kind of upgrades to pump stations down line that might be required, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure you've, I'm sure you've been trying to crystal ball and get a handle on that. But as you go through your master planning and we translate that into water consumption and wastewater flows, you know, I think I think we can start conceptually as you develop the plan. I'm guessing what's going to happen is you're going to have sort of a master plan for this. You're going to know what it is you're going to build in the next 18 or 24 months, and mm -hmm. that's the stuff you'll probably want to get uh, permitted and formally approved by the board. And and but also looking at the scale of the rest of it, so there's a way to gauge what the overall impacts 
on our facilities will be so that the superintendent can tell you what the best options will be to tie in and connect to the system. Mm -hmm. um, and then as much as you can pin those down and make those firm numbers, that would be helpful to you and to us, but more, more to you in your financial planning mm -hmm. as, as well as construction part of it. Um, I just want to avoid a case where something happens at the last minute and you get a surprise number from us because, uh, well, we've had a, we had a recent business, business in town and I heard from the owner how disgruntled he was because our fee doubled and it was a significant fee for him and a cost for him. And it turned out that our initial fee was based on the estimate that he gave us and then when he actually got the development, the fee was double, the, the flows were double what he originally had told us. So I explained to him we rely on his information. So we're going to do the same thing with you. We'll be relying sure. on your information. And as things, as things firm up, that's when we know what the real numbers will be. So that's all, we're going to have to be careful. And you know, it's, fluid. it's fluid until it firms up. But everything is going to be subject to change. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go, because you know, there's certainly not going to be any intent on our part to hit you with some kind of unanticipated number late late in the game and do everything we can to avoid that. I, I appreciate your comments and, and completely understand it. Uh, it's going to take some close coordination with yeah. you know with the with the district to, to figure this out and uh, figure the best way to do it. Yeah. And I think all the impact fees will be through us for sewer. I don't think there's any town the, the town had some Hygus Parkway fees that they were collecting <laughs> but I, I don't I don't think that you're going to be, maybe you should have that conversation with the town to make sure that you're not going to be, or if you are, you'd be aware of what, what they might be. I know that, uh, I know the Downs paid some, oops, paid some fees. We haven't got as much land out here on Hagus Parkway that's developable as anybody had hoped it, that we would. Uh, so we'll be interested to see what really winds up out here. You know, we've looked at the sewer system and think, you know, maybe part of the project would go into it. It's going to, I think some's going to go one way, some's going to go another, and right. that's going to be working with the trustees and, you know, with David and, and, and figuring out, yeah. you know, how best to handle that. Yeah, and so I'm just cautioning you, if if it turns out that you're going to be accessing the sewer in Haggis Parkway, that you'll want to have some discussions with the town about what the impacts will be of that because I think they have a fee structure set up mm -hmm. based on the flows that are going to be generated through their system and I'm not yeah. that's that's the most that I know about it I, I haven't ever been involved with it yeah. I just know that it exists and there were assessments that were made to landowners in the past and so yeah, be aware about, just be aware of that about 600,000 to the downs on that yeah that's what they paid the tip right yeah but based on what projections yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. You, you want to mm -hmm. you want to kind of work that through. Any other comments from the question or questions from the trustees? No? Okay. Thank you, Rocky. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. a great presentation. It's a huge project, and if it's done right, I think it'll be a real real boon to the town for a long time. So good luck. Good luck Thank with you. it. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you again. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Unplugged. Okay. Uh, one month budget summary. Uh, one month budget summary is included in the package. I recommend approval. So moved. Move second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of the one month budget summary. None opposed. Public comments. Public is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee comments. May, may I start, Mr. Chairman, while Mr. Rizbeard is still here? Sure. sure. Uh, my public comments. I uh, wanted to uh, thank Rocky and uh, Mrs. Holmes for coming out tonight and putting on the presentation. also wanted to thank Rizbeard Construction for their uh, response to the mishap we had down on Herbert Drive. Um, also wanted to extend my condolences to your family for the loss of your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Aubrey, yeah, it just happened a few um, years ago. 
Yeah, I think I'm going to reiterate what I had said last month because the flu is still alive and well. You know, it is, and we are all harboring it. <clears throat> At least many of us have been sending to you. So, uh, again, continue to get your flu shots, wash your hands, and, and everybody stay safe. Joe. Thanks for the presentation tonight. Um, it's going to be a very exciting project. It could definitely change the face of the town. And I appreciate you guys coming out because it's definitely going to imp uh, impact our infrastructure. <laughs> so, and I didn't realize, but sorry for the loss to your family. Uh, otherwise than that, I'd just like to thank the board and uh, the superintendent and the staff for the continued good work. Ben? Uh, yeah, it's a good presentation. I think there's a lot going on. I, I, you see so many of these bigger projects going on now that it's just... Uh, it's going to be a completely different city in a few years than what it has been, or a town. Well, maybe a city. <laughs> and uh, condolences on your, on your Judy. I'd like to say it sounds exciting and wonderful. I only wish I'd be alive when the thing is done. <laughs> Forty years I do not have. So if you could shorten it up. <laughs> I'm not even sure about 25. I'm going to interrupt anyway. you. You might have 40 years, but he's going to get it done faster, so I don't have you'll be years. around to see it. <laughs> I'd also like to say that I have been watching the Olympics and excited and so proud of the performance and comportment of our athletes, and I'm proud to be an American. Awesome. Yeah, on. and an Italian, right? Sure. <laughs> Italian, American. <laughs> Nick. Uh, first off, condolences on Teddy. Maybe she left that for the last. <laughs> Anyway. Give me a second. Nick, let me go first, and then you can talk. Um, also, yeah, condolences on the passing of your grandmother. She was quite a special woman. Um, and I'd like to compliment our staff again. I, I just want to take note, you know, that I'm really pleased to see that our staff is, is giving instruction in the wastewater field to other practitioners, and I think it's, it's a credit to the quality and the caliber of the people that we have working for us. And that's the reason why uh, the district's operations are done at such a high level and in such an exemplary manner. Um, I'm excited about the Scarborough Downs development. I know there's lots of there's going to be lots of infrastructure issues. There's going to be lots of uh, lots of impacts that you're going to have to fight your way through and develop. But I think it would be a huge step forward in the community if it's done right. And I think if there's any local developers that could do it right, it's it's you guys. I think your track record in Scarborough and in the region has been excellent. And uh, and uh, you know, starting back with your dad, I always held him up as a prototypical kind of developer who uh, looked at the big picture in the community that he was in and made his projects fit in Scarborough, and he helped shape uh, where Scarborough is at now. It wasn't always wasn't always uh, a fun mutual process, but he always had great input and strong opinions, and he always made those known, and those really helped to shape, you know, the evolution of what the town's expectations were in the development process. So I think you guys are well poised to do that. Um, so I'm happy that it, that it's that it's your team that that's trying to pull this off, and I hope you can hold it all together and be the same guys who are developing it at the end and not have to sell big portions of it off because I think you'll do it. I think you'll do it right. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. Um, oh, congratulations to the U.S. women who won gold in a did. shootout tonight. Mm -hmm. They did. <laughs> and I'm not a hockey fan, but I was into that game like I've never been into a hockey Absolutely. game before. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, Charlie, thanks for taking over. Um, kudos to Jay and Dave and Rispera Brothers for the quick response on the service break. Kudos to um, the Rispera Brothers for the Scarborough Downs sale and plan. I lived in Mashpee for a year and a half, and before you even mentioned it, that's the first thing that came to mind, so it's a good model to go by. Um, Kudos to Scott on his teaching debut and, uh, and to Dave for teaching the Jetsy class. I hear they both did a great job. Um, and kudos to Carl, Josh, Paul, and Ruby for getting those valves and grinders taken care of. I appreciate the hard work that the district does. Thanks, Dave, for another good presentation. And, uh, you know, go USA. Dave, any comments? No, I'm sorry about your...
I know that I didn't, I did not know. Look forward to working with you on this project. We've already met a couple times, and it's, uh, I think it'll be good. Great. Okay, with that, the motion to adjourn will be in order. Motion. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned. It's 9 0.